the lead, deputy leader of the Labour group um, asked all, to, all councillors to get involved more in, in events. Do you think that's a fair call? I think it's a very fair call. All councillors should be getting involved. The only thing I'll point out is, I think this uh, story went up on Tuesday, that morning I was at a residence meeting with several other councillors because where the health and safety and fire protocols have changed, it has impacted quite a lot some of the people who live in sheltered accommodations. And that's what I was elected to do. I was elected to go along to these residence meetings and hear my constituents' views. I wasn't elected to go to lots of free events and have free lunches. And don't get me wrong, those events are important. That's why myself, Councillor Anderson, Councillor Tolson and Councillor Hardman all went to the um, uh, Scouts uh, Award presentation evening. Uh, well, amazing to add, there was not actually any Labour members there. So I went to cast stones in glass houses. Do you think, therefore, um, it's not so long since you, you left um, education, so to speak. Do you think there should be some form of audit where you, you every month you used to tell how many events you've been to, how many uh, ward constituents you've spoken to? Absolutely, um, because I think that, I said during the campaign, this is what I intend to do, this is the sort of person I expect to be. If you don't think I've done a good job in four years, get rid of me. So I would absolutely support an audit and once again, uh, the deputy leader is quite right, councils do need to attend things, but I would just remind her that councils don't always do the glamorous things. Sometimes they are literally on the phone for hours, combing through casework. We don't always get to get our photo in the papers by going to these big events, which are very important, but the work is sometimes not seen, and that is why I think you do need an audit. But do you accept that we are now in the teeth of a public sector recession, so mm -hmm. to speak, and as opposed to a private sector one, and that people will look at every opportunity, the 49 people who are paid allowances by the taxpayer, yep. any opportunity that people can have a, a pop at you mm -hmm. for not appearing or not doing a job, that people will. You've really got to be belt and braces. Well, in all fairness, if you're not prepared to back up your performance, if you're not prepared to justify what you're doing, you shouldn't have uh, stood for election. Two years ago, uh, Danny Nicklin was, was, had the too young to be a councillor, and, and have you inherited that mantle? Uh, not inherited it. Obviously, the homestead has quite an older population to it. So when I stood, obviously people said the likelihood of me winning could have actually been decreased. My age could have damaged me. Um, I did get the highest popular vote in the borough. Um, so I think people have made the distinction there's a difference between maturity and experience. I do certainly lack in experience and I can't not considering my age compared to some other councillors' ages but at the end of the day I'm here, I'm doing the job and that um, overshadows any question about age. So issues for example the budget, mm. what's your take on the budget? Um, obviously we've been on a spending spree for far too long and it's very simple, live within your means. I'm not going to be um, childish and say Gordon Brown calls the global recession because of course he didn't but the point is every family knows that you need a rainy day fund just in case things go bad and that is why I think it is quite dangerous of John Kent to be saying that he won't be supporting the reserves because we would like as a group about seven million now in the reserves fund we've only got around about two that means if there is a disaster we don't have um, the flexibility or we won't have the flexibility to deal with it. Gordon Brown did cause the global recession, but if we had a rainy day fund, if we had said, look, we need this money aside, just in case if something unanticipated happens, then we've got it, and that's what we need in Thurrock. Because honestly, we can put together uh, a good budget, John Kent can put together a good budget, but luck and chance are the wreckers of the best laid plans, and if the leader doesn't support what our group said about supporting our plans for the reserves, we could be left in a very, very precarious situation. But is this not the time now? The um, I was about to say the electorate has spoken, but the electorate did speak, and then yeah. things happened in the chamber. Yeah. Is this the time for all 49 people to to get behind a budget and and move forward? This is the time to agree on what we agree on and be quite honest about that, and then have constructive comments about what we don't agree on. John Kent has been extremely fair uh, with trying to work with the opposition. I've spoken to him, spoken to him on a couple of occasions, issues that concern me, like uh, the youth cabinet, and he's been very, very fair and courteous in dealings with us. But at the end of the day, I do genuinely believe that 
we need the reserves and this will be an area that we will be a very, very vigorous opposition on. You mentioned the Youth Cabinet. Um, uh, St Clair's um, put a bid into the Youth Cabinet recently and they uh, were told that the, the money they were looking for isn't there for a trip to Ecuador. Yeah. I think there'll be many tears shed over students not being able to go to Ecuador. Mm. But the cuts are going to appear here and there, aren't they? How, you know, how are you going to explain that to your constituents? Because, quite simply, everyone knows if you've got X amount coming in and Y amount going out, something has to give. The last Labour government allowed the country to overspend far too much and I don't have a team of advisors around me to tell me, look, if you run on your overdraft all the time and if you're spending money you haven't got, James, you're going to have a very bad debt. So cuts are being made at the moment. Unfortunately, it has impacted the Youth Cabinet. Unfortunately, St Clair's might not get their uh, grant from the Youth Cabinet that they want. But at the end of the day, we're being responsible now, get the level of debt under control and lay the groundwork for a more prosperous future.